Look at this. I'm, I'm sitting out for five hours in your eye, David you Benjamin, you arrogant guy. I think you can angle me. You just got so pwned. It's a joke. This guy is a villain. This guy is a villain. This guy is definitely a villain. In the realm of poker, where cunning strategy meets nerve-wracking unpredictability, a select few individuals have transcended the game's boundaries and etched their name into the annals of infamy. These notorious figures renowned for their audacious schemes, deceitful maneuvers, and relentless pursuit of victory at any cost have come to embody the darker side of poker's rich tapestry. From manipulative masterminds who thrived on psychological warfare to audacious cheaters who shattered the spirit of fair play. The history of poker is chock full of larger than life villains. Like a bit of that, innit, Stel? He thought he could <laughs> angle me all day, innit? He thinks he's 10 years older than me, so he knows a little bit. Think I care. Whose actions have left an indelible mark on the game. So let's dive into the depths of poker's shadowy underbelly to explore the nine most notorious villains in its storied history, shedding light on their malevolent exploits and examining the lasting impact that they've had on the world's most beloved card game. But before we do that, please make sure to subscribe to Poker Boom. We're still a new channel and we appreciate all the support we're seeing. And don't forget to hit the bell so you'll be notified whenever we release new content. All right, let's start off with the obvious, someone we actually already did an entire villain breakdown on, and that's Phil Helmuth, also known as the Poker Brat. Undoubtedly highly decorated, Helmuth has dominated the World Series of Poker like no other. His 17 WSOP bracelets are a testament to his prowess in the game. Time and time again, he has demonstrated his ability to triumph in the glamorous setting of Las Vegas. However, it's not just his remarkable achievements at all costs that have solidified his reputation as a villain. All they did is f me over in this game so far. F guy bluffs off all his money, then slow rolls me. He doesn't say kings, he says two pair. It's his on-table antics and epic outbursts. Helmuth has perfected the art of playing up to his image, and fans can't help but be captivated by his larger-than-life persona. Moving on, we've got Jake Schindler, once a respected member of the high-stakes poker community. He experienced a dramatic downfall in 2022. Accused of utilizing real-time assistance during online play, Schindler faced repercussions and was banned from major poker platforms. Despite the controversy surrounding him, Schindler defiantly participated in the World Series of Poker, seemingly unbothered by the anger and resentment directed towards him, and even managed to emerge victorious in the $50,000 High Roller event. Our super high roller bowl Europe champion, he wins $3.2 million. Schindler's actions not only tarnish his own reputation, but also raise questions about the integrity of the game itself. At number seven, we've got Mike Matisso, another player who has earned the title of a poker villain. Whee! I set him up like a dog, baby! Mm. How many uh, green chips you have there? Poker 101, how to school Phil Helmuth. Yet whose fans cannot resist his charm. The recent revival of his podcast has garnered a substantial audience, a testament to his enduring popularity. Mattiso, also known as the mouth. That's the first pot I won. Thank you, thank you. Has previously reached the pinnacle of the WSOP main event final table, further solidifying his status as a player with a knack for stirring emotions and captivating audiences. And here's a guy we all knew would be on the list, Chris Ferguson. A former owner of the now defunct Full Tilt poker platform, he faced public scrutiny and disdain for his involvement in the platform's downfall. Alongside fellow poker star Howard Lederer and others, Ferguson profited while the site collapsed, leaving numerous players without their rightful winnings. This led to Ferguson's ostracism from the poker community. He has a lot of pressure on him, I guess, because like the social opinion on him is very bad and all the things and like we don't know the situation inside. However, in 2017, he made a controversial return to the WSOP. Despite the animosity surrounding his presence, Ferguson secured a record-breaking 23 caches and claimed the Player of the Year title after winning his sixth bracelet. In the realm of British poker, there exists a character who is revered as a hero by some and seen as a villain by others, Luke Schwartz. All right, big man, go on, do your little angle bet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I bet. <laughs> With his flamboyant personality and unapologetically bold actions, he's divided the poker community. Schwartz is never one to shy away from controversy. He's often seen flaunting his designer handbags and proudly showcasing his accomplishments 
and asserting his expertise in the game. Crossing paths with him at the table is not a scenario that most players are too happy about. Next up, we've got Russ Hamilton, the 1994 WSOP main event champion. Russ, Russ Hamilton's yeah, our new world job. champion. He deserves everybody here likes him, too. He's got a big following, and he played great. Found himself embroiled in controversy when he was discovered to be the mastermind behind the infamous super user scandal in 2008. Hamilton had programmed code into the Ultimate Bet platform, granting him the ability to view his opponent's hole cards. With this extremely unfair advantage, he amassed millions of dollars in profits. The revelation of Hamilton's deceitful actions shocked the poker community, and he promptly disappeared from the tournament scene. His actions not only betrayed the spirit of fair play, but also raised concerns about the security and integrity of online poker platforms. Give you one chance to save yourself. Jamie Gold, often regarded as one of the weakest WSOP main event champions. Jamie Gold makes believers of us all. Another amateur, another improbable winner. Faced controversy after his victory. While Gold pocketed a substantial $12 million, a dispute arose with his backer, Crispin Lacer, who claimed he was owed half of the winnings. The disagreement led to a legal battle, and the prize money was temporarily frozen. However, the two parties eventually reached a private settlement, rendering the need for arbitration unnecessary. Despite his financial success, Baby! Yes! Yes! I trapped him! Gold's reputation suffered due to the dispute, raising questions about the ethics and trustworthiness of poker agreements. In the number two slot, we meet Martin Cabrell, a name that evokes a sense of both awe, but mostly disdain within the world of poker. Martin's antics at the table are worse than anyone I've played with. Playing with him is unbelievably unpleasant. He's rude. He stands as a true embodiment of a villain in the game, with an unapologetic approach to exploiting his opponents and a notorious disregard for ethical boundaries. Cabrell has earned a reputation as a polarizing figure. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. He's broken one of the rules. Not allowed to stand up. To Cabrell's cunning manipulations at the table, coupled with his unscrupulous behavior, have left many questioning the integrity of his game and the fairness of his triumphs. He's currently being investigated by the World Series of Poker for a potential cheating scandal during the $250,000 buy-in Super High Roller No Limit Hold'em event just this year, where he finished third and pocketed a $2.3 million prize. Now, our field of trash talkers would not be complete without a true master of the game, and I'm talking about men, the master win, the four-time player of the year, will be in C4. Finally at the top, we have to go to the worst of the worst. If there were to be an arch villain in the poker world, Men the Master would fit the bill perfectly. The mere mention of his name conjures up images of the ultimate antagonist, someone uncompromising and controversial. While Men the Master boasts an impressive track record in poker tournaments, it's his reputation for being ruthless and unpredictable that sets him apart. In fact, it would not be an overstatement to say that Men is perhaps the only true villain in the realm of poker. At the end of the day, poker villains serve as a reminder of the inherent complexity and intrigue that lies within the world of competitive card play. While poker may embody principles of skill, strategy, and calculated risk-taking, villains inject an element of unpredictability and challenge the status quo. Their audacity and willingness to push boundaries force players to adapt, innovate, and sharpen their own skills. They remind us that poker is not merely a game of numbers and probability, but a dynamic battleground where psychological warfare and moral dilemmas intertwine. In the end, it is through the presence of villains that poker continues to captivate and challenge players, elevating it from a mere game of cards to a multifaceted microcosm of the human experience. And that's it for this one. Thanks for checking out another episode of Poker Boom. We hope you enjoyed it. Who do you think is the biggest villain in the history of poker? Let us know in the comments, and we'll see you in the next one.